Yuri Gagarin, the Soviet cosmonaut who made history by becoming the first human to journey into outer space. He accomplished this feat on April 12, 1961, aboard the Vostok 1 spacecraft, completing one orbit of Earth. This was a major milestone for the Soviet Union in the space race, and Gagarin became an international celebrity as a result. He was awarded many medals and titles, including the nation's highest distinction, Hero of the Soviet Union. Yuri Gagarin was born in the village of Klushino in the Russian SFSR. In his youth, he worked as a foundryman at a steel plant in Liubertsi. Later, he joined the Soviet Air Forces as a pilot and was stationed at the Luostari Air Base near the Norway-Soviet Union border. Gagarin was selected for the Soviet space program alongside five other cosmonauts. After his historic spaceflight, he became the deputy training director of the Cosmonaut Training Center, which was later named after him. In 1962, he was elected as a deputy of the Soviet Union and then to the Soviet of Nationalities, respectively the lower and upper chambers of the Supreme Soviet. Yuri Gagarin's historic spaceflight on Vostok 1 made him the first human to journey into outer space, completing one orbit of Earth on April 12, 1961. This achievement turned him into an international celebrity and earned him many medals and titles, including the hero of the Soviet Union. Born in the village of Klushino in the Russian SFSR, Gagarin initially worked as a foundryman at a steel plant in Liubertsi before joining the Soviet Air Forces as a pilot. He was later selected for the Soviet space program and became the deputy training director of the Cosmonaut Training Center after his spaceflight. Gagarin's early life was marked by difficult challenges, making it far from an easy journey. He was born on March 9, 1934, in the village of Klushino near Gzhatsk, in the Smolensk Oblast of the Russian Soviet Republic. His parents, Alexei Ivanovich Gagarin and Anna Timofeyevna Gagarina, worked on a state-owned farm, with his father as a carpenter and his mother as a dairy farmer. Yuri was the third of four children, with an older brother and sister and a younger brother. His older brother, Valentin, was born in 1924 and helped with the cattle on the farm, while his sister, Zoya, born in 1927, helped take care of Yuri and their youngest brother, Boris, born in 1936. Like millions of Soviet citizens, his family also suffered during the German occupation in World War II. The Nazis captured Klushino in 1941, burning down the school and forcing the residents including the Gagarin family, to work the farms to feed the occupying soldiers. Those who refused were beaten or sent to the concentration camp set up at Gzatsk. After the Nazis captured Klushino, the Gagarin family was forced to live in a small mud hut behind their house for 21 months. During this time, Yuri became a saboteur after a German soldier, known as the Devil, attempted to hang his younger brother Boris. In retaliation, Yuri sabotaged the soldiers' work. Additionally, in early 1943, his two older siblings were deported by the Germans to Poland for slave labor. They later escaped and were found by Soviet soldiers who recruited them to help with the war effort. They did not return home until after the war, in 1945. His mother was hospitalized after being injured by a German soldier. When the Germans were driven out of Klushino on March 9, 1944, Yuri assisted the Red Army in locating mines buried in the roads by the retreating German army. After the war, the Gagarin family moved to Gzhatsk in 1946, where Yuri continued his education. He and his younger brother Boris were enrolled in a school run by a young woman who volunteered to be the teacher. The school was built in the town and was basic with the children learning to read using a discarded Soviet military manual. A former Soviet airman later joined the school to teach maths and science, which were Yuri's favorite subjects. Yuri was also part of a group of children who built model airplanes. His interest in aircraft was sparked after a Yakovlev fighter plane crash, landed in Klushino during the war. In 1950, 
At the age of 16, Yuri Gagarin began an apprenticeship as a foundryman at a steel plant in Lyubetsy near Moscow and enrolled at a local young workers' school for seventh grade evening classes. After graduating in 1951 from both the seventh grade and the vocational school with honors in mold making and foundry work, he was selected for further training at the Industrial Technical School in Saratov, where he studied tractors. While in Saratov, Gagarin volunteered at a local flying club for weekend training as a Soviet air cadet, where he trained to fly a biplane and later a primary trainer aircraft. He also earned extra money as a part-time dock laborer on the Volga River. In 1955, Yuri Gagarin was accepted into the first Chkalov Higher Air Force Pilot School in Orenburg after completing his technical schooling. He began his training on the Yak-18, which he was already familiar with, and later graduated to training on the MiG-15 in February 1956. During his training, Gagarin struggled twice to land the two-seater trainer aircraft and risked dismissal from pilot training. However, the commander of the regiment decided to give him another chance at landing. Gagarin's flight instructor gave him a cushion to sit on, which improved his view from the cockpit, and he landed successfully. After completing his evaluation in a trainer aircraft, Gagarin began flying solo in 1957. In 1957, Yuri Gagarin was commissioned a lieutenant in the Soviet Air Forces after completing his flight training. He graduated from the first Chikalov Higher Air Force Pilot School in Orenburg on November 5, 1957, and was posted to the Luostari Air Base near the Norwegian border in Murmansk Oblast for a two-year assignment with the Northern Fleet. He was assigned to the 769th Fighter Aviation Regiment of the 192nd Fighter Aviation Division, flying Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-15 aircraft. By October 1959, Gagarin had flown a total of 265 hours. In 1959, Gagarin was selected for cosmonaut training as part of the first group of USSR cosmonauts. He was promoted to the rank of senior lieutenant on November 6, 1959, and was interviewed by a medical commission for qualification to the space program. By this time, he had accumulated 265 hours of flight time. Gagarin was chosen for space exploration after expressing interest in it following the launch of Luna 3 on October 6, 1959. His recommendation to the Soviet space program was endorsed and forwarded by Lieutenant Colonel Babushkin. By July 7, 1959, Gagarin was rated military pilot, third class. Gagarin was selected for the Vostok program after a secret nationwide selection process. He was part of an elite training group known as the Sochi 6, which would make up the first cosmonauts of the Vostok program. Gagarin and the other prospective cosmonauts underwent physical and psychological testing at the Central Aviation Scientific Research Hospital in Moscow. The selection criteria were strict, as the Vostok capsule had limited space requiring candidates to weigh less than 72 kilo and be no taller than 170 centimeters. Gagarin met these requirements and was chosen for the historic spaceflight. From a pool of 154 qualified pilots shortlisted by their Air Force units, the military physicians chose 29 cosmonaut candidates, of whom 20 were approved by the Credential Committee of the Soviet government. The first 12, including Gagarin, were approved on 7 March 1960 and eight more were added in a series of subsequent orders issued until June. In March 1960, Yuri Gagarin began his training for the Vostok program at the Kodinka airfield in central Moscow. The training regimen involved vigorous and repetitive physical exercises, which Alexei Leonov, a member of the initial group of 12, described as akin to training for the Olympic Games. In April 1960, they began parachute training in Saratov Oblast, and each man completed about 40 to 50 jumps from both low and high altitudes over both land and water. The training was intense, and the cosmonauts had to be in top physical and mental condition to withstand the rigors of spaceflight. Yuri Gagarin was a highly regarded candidate among his peers. 
When the cosmonaut candidates were asked to vote anonymously for a candidate besides themselves that they would like to be the first to fly, all but three chose Gagarin. One of the candidates, Yevgeny Krunov, believed that Gagarin was very focused and demanding of himself and others when necessary. On May 30, 1960, Gagarin was further selected for an accelerated training group, known as the Vanguard 6, from which the first cosmonauts of the Vostok program would be chosen. The other members of the group were Anatoly Kartashov, Andrea Nikolaev, Pavel Popovich, German Titov, and Valentin Varlamov. However, Kartashov and Varlamov were injured and replaced by Krunov and Grigory Nelyubov. As several of the candidates selected for the Vostok program, including Yuri Gagarin, did not have higher education degrees, they were enrolled in a correspondence course program at the Zhukovsky Air Force Engineering Academy. Gagarin enrolled in September 1960 and did not earn his specialist diploma until early 1968. Gagarin was also subjected to experiments that were designed to test physical and psychological endurance, including oxygen starvation tests, in which the cosmonauts were locked in an isolation chamber and the air slowly pumped out. He also trained for the upcoming flight by experiencing G-forces in a centrifuge. Psychological tests included placing the candidates in an anechoic chamber in complete isolation. Gagarin was in the chamber from July 26 to August 5th, the training was rigorous, and the cosmonauts had to be in top physical and mental condition to withstand the rigors of spaceflight. In August 1960, a Soviet Air Force doctor described Yuri as a modest, quick-witted individual with a fantastic memory, sharp attention, and a deep understanding of life. In the end, at the State Commission meeting on April 8th, Kamanin stood up and formally nominated Gagarin as the primary pilot and Titov as his backup. Without much discussion, the Commission approved the proposal and moved on to other last-minute logistical issues. It was assumed that in the event Gagarin developed health problems before liftoff, Titov would take his place, with Nelyubov acting as his backup. On 12th of April 1961, at 6.07 a.m., the Vostok 1 spacecraft was launched from Baikonur Cosmodrome, with Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin aboard, making him the first human to travel into space. The radio exchange during Gagarin's rocket launch was tense, yet filled with excitement. Mission controller Korolev counted down each stage, exclaiming, Lift off! Gagarin added, Off we go. Goodbye until we meet again soon, dear friends, as the spacecraft soared into space. In his post-flight report, Gagarin described the unfamiliar sensation of weightlessness, feeling suspended as if hanging in a horizontal position in straps. He was noted for singing, The Motherland Hears, The Motherland Knows during re-entry, and his exceptional performance led to recognition as a qualified military pilot first class and promotion to the rank of major, a special honor bestowed during his historic flight. At about 7,000 meters, Gagarin ejected from the descending capsule as planned and landed using a parachute. There were concerns that Gagarin's orbital spaceflight records for the duration, altitude and lifted mass would not be recognized by the FAI, Fédération Aéronautique Internationale, the world governing body for setting standards and keeping records in the field, which at the time required that the pilot land with the craft. Gagarin and Soviet officials initially refused to admit that he had not landed with his spacecraft, an omission which became apparent after Titov's flight on Vostok 2 four months later. Gagarin's spaceflight records were nonetheless certified and reaffirmed by the FAI, which revised its rules and acknowledged that the crucial steps of the safe launch, orbit and return of the pilot had been accomplished. Gagarin is internationally recognized as the first human in space and the first to orbit the Earth. Gagarin's flight on Vostok 1 was a triumph for the Soviet space program and opened a new era in the history of space exploration. He became a national hero of the Soviet Union and Eastern Bloc, as well as a famous figure around the world. 
Newspapers around the globe published his biography and details of his flight. Gagarin was escorted in a long motorcade of high-ranking officials through the streets of Moscow to the Kremlin, where, in a lavish ceremony, Nikita Khrushchev awarded him the title Hero of the Soviet Union. Other cities in the Soviet Union also held mass demonstrations, the scale of which was second only to World War II victory parades. Yuri Gagarin's flight on Vostok 1 made him also an international celebrity. He toured widely abroad, accepting invitations from about 30 countries in the years following his flight. In just the first four months, he visited Brazil, Bulgaria, Canada, Cuba, Czechoslovakia, Finland, Hungary, Iceland, and other countries. Gagarin gained a reputation as an intelligent public figure and was noted for his charismatic smile. He answered questions at a press conference in Moscow, reportedly attended by 1,000 reporters. He also visited the United Kingdom, going to London and Manchester, where he refused an umbrella and insisted that the roof of the convertible car he was riding in remain open despite heavy rain. Because of his popularity, US President John F. Kennedy barred Gagarin from visiting the United States. After his historic flight on Vostok 1, Yuri Gagarin became a deputy to the Soviet Union and was elected to the Central Committee of the Young Communist League. He spent several years working on designs for a reusable spacecraft at the Cosmonaut facility in Star City. Gagarin was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel of the Soviet Air Forces on June 12, 1962 and received the rank of Colonel on November 6, 1963. On December 20, 1963, he became Deputy Training Director of the Cosmonaut Training Facility. Soviet officials, including Kamanin, tried to keep Gagarin away from any flights, being worried about losing their hero in an accident. Kamanin was also concerned by Gagarin's drinking and believed the sudden rise to fame had taken its toll on the cosmonaut. While acquaintances say Gagarin had been a sensible drinker, his touring schedule placed him in social situations in which he was increasingly expected to drink alcohol. Yuri Gagarin was re-elected as a deputy of the Soviet Union, this time to the Soviet of Nationalities, the upper chamber of the legislature. The following year, he began to re-qualify as a fighter pilot and was assigned as the backup pilot for his friend Vladimir Komarov on the Soyuz 1 flight after five years without piloting duty. Despite being a strong contender for the Soyuz 1 mission, he was ultimately replaced by Komarov in April 1966 and reassigned to the Soyuz 3 mission. This period marked a significant shift in Gagarin's career as he transitioned back to piloting and was involved in the Soviet space program in a different capacity. The Soyuz 1 launch was rushed due to implicit political pressures and despite Gagarin's protests, that additional safety precautions were necessary. Gagarin accompanied Komarov to the rocket before launch and relayed instructions to Komarov from ground control following multiple system failures aboard the spacecraft. Despite their best efforts, Soyuz 1 crash landed after its parachutes failed to open, killing Komarov instantly. After the Soyuz 1 crash, Gagarin was permanently banned from training for and participating in further space flights. He was also grounded from flying aircraft solo, a demotion he worked hard to lift. He was temporarily relieved of duties to focus on academics with the promise that he would be able to resume flight training. On 17 February 1968, Gagarin successfully defended his aerospace engineering thesis on the subject of space plane aerodynamic configuration and graduated cum laude from the Zhukovsky Air Force Engineering Academy. Yuri Gagarin's life was full of achievements, like being the first person in space, happy moments like getting married, having kids, and enjoying sports. His journey went from reaching incredible heights in space to facing tough times and thinking deeply about life. Gagarin met Valentina Goryacheva in 1957 at the May Day celebrations in Moscow while he was a cadet in flight school. She was a medical technician who had graduated from Orenburg Medical School. They were married on 7th of November of the same year, the same day Gagarin graduated from his flight school. 
and they had two daughters. Yelena Gagarina, born in 1959, is an art historian who has worked as the Director General of the Moscow Kremlin Museums since 2001. Galina Gagarina, born in 1961, is a professor of economics and the department chair at Plekhanov Russian University of Economics in Moscow. Following his rise to fame at a Black Sea resort in September 1961, he was reportedly caught by his wife during a liaison with a nurse who had aided him after a boating incident. He attempted to escape through a window and jumped off a second-floor balcony, resulting in a permanent scar above his left eyebrow. In his youth, Gagarin was a keen sportsman and played ice hockey as a goalkeeper. He was also a basketball fan and coached the Saratov Industrial Technical School team, as well as being a referee. Some Soviet sources have claimed that Yuri Gagarin said, I don't see any god up here, during his spaceflight but there is no evidence of this in the official transcripts of his communications with Earth stations. In a 2006 interview, Gagarin's friend, Colonel Valentin Petrov, stated that Gagarin never said these words and that the quote originated from Khrushchev's speech at the plenum of the Central Committee of the CPSU about the state's anti-religion campaign, saying Gagarin flew into space but didn't see any God there. Petrov also said that Gagarin had been baptized into the Russian Orthodox Church as a child, and a 2011 FOMA magazine article quoted the rector of the Orthodox Church in Star City, saying that Gagarin baptized his elder daughter, Yelena, shortly before his space flight, and his family used to celebrate Christmas and Easter and keep icons in the house. However, in his book, Gagarin denied God and wrote, Man's flight into space dealt a crushing blow to the churchman. In the streams of letters coming to me, I was pleased to read the confessions in which believers, impressed by the achievements of science, renounced God, agreed that there is no God, and everything connected with his name is fiction and nonsense. Yuri Gagarin earned numerous medals and special honors from countries around the world recognizing his historic journey into space, including being the first human to orbit the Earth and celebrating his achievements as an international hero and symbol of scientific excellence. On 14th April 1961, Gagarin was honored with a 12-mile parade attended by millions of people that concluded at the Red Square. After a short speech, he was bestowed the Hero of the Soviet Union, Order of Lenin, merited Master of Sports of the Soviet Union, and the first pilot cosmonaut of the USSR. On 15th of April, the Soviet Academy of Sciences awarded him with the Konstantin Tsiolkovsky Gold Medal. Gagarin had also been awarded four Soviet commemorative medals throughout his career. He was honored as a hero of socialist labor from Czechoslovakia on 29th April 1961, and as a hero of socialist labor in Bulgaria, which included the Order of Georgi Dimitrov in the same year. On the eighth anniversary of the beginning of the Cuban Revolution, 26th July, President Osvaldo Dorticos of Cuba presented him with the first Order of Playa Giron, a newly created medal. These honors and awards were a testament to the international recognition and respect for Gagarin's historic achievement as the first human in space. Yuri Gagarin was also awarded the 1960 Gold Air Medal and the 1961 De La Vol Medal from the Fédération Aéronautique Internationale in Switzerland. Yuri Gagarin's enduring legacy reaches far beyond his historic spaceflight, with numerous honors, landmarks, and even lunar memorials testifying to the global admiration for his groundbreaking achievements in space exploration. Yuri Gagarin's spaceflight on April 12, 1961, has been commemorated since 1962, first in the USSR and since 1991 in Russia and some other former Soviet republics as Cosmonautics Day. Since 2000, Yuri's Night, an international celebration, has been held annually to commemorate milestones in space exploration. In 2011, it was declared the International Day of Human Space Flight by the United Nations. The Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City was named on April 30, 1968. 
The launch pad at Baikonur Cosmodrome, from which Sputnik 1 and Vostok 1 were launched, is now known as Gagarin's Start. The Russian Air Force Academy was renamed the Gagarin Air Force Academy in 1968. Yuri Gagarin has been honored on the moon by astronauts and astronomers. During the Apollo 11 mission in 1969, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin left a memorial satchel containing medals commemorating Gagarin and Komarov on the moon's surface. In 1971, Apollo 15 astronauts David Scott and James Irwin left the small fallen astronaut sculpture at their landing site as a memorial to the American astronauts and Soviet cosmonauts who died in the space race. The names on its plaque included Yuri Gagarin and 14 others. In 1970, a 163 mile wide crater on the far side of the moon was named after him. In a 2010 Space Foundation survey, Yuri Gagarin was ranked as the sixth most popular space hero. A Russian documentary titled Gagarin First in Space was released in 2013, and his family took legal action to stop the portrayal of Gagarin in a fictional drama and a musical. On March 27, 1968, tragedy struck when Yuri Gagarin and his flight instructor, Vladimir Seryogin, were involved in a fatal crash during a routine training flight from Chkalovsky Air Base. Their MiG-15 UTI aircraft crashed near the town of Kirzakh, resulting in the loss of both their lives. Following their deaths, the bodies of Gagarin and Seryogin were cremated, and their ashes were interred in the walls of the Kremlin. The cause of the crash that claimed Gagarin's life remains shrouded in uncertainty, and has been the subject of much speculation and several conspiracy theories. The official findings reported that Gagarin and Seryogin had maneuvered to avoid colliding with a bird or another object, which led to their aircraft entering a tailspin and plummeting to the ground. However, this explanation has been met with skepticism, and various theories, both technical and conspiratorial, have been proposed over the years. The crash that took the life of the first man in space has remained a topic of debate and intrigue, with the circumstances surrounding the incident continuing to be a subject of interest and speculation. The tragic and untimely loss of Yuri Gagarin has left an indelible mark on the history of space exploration, and his legacy as a pioneering cosmonaut endures to this day. Yuri Gagarin's legacy as the first human to journey into outer space continues to inspire and captivate people around the world. His bravery, determination, and pioneering spirit paved the way for future space exploration and opened up new frontiers for humanity. Gagarin's achievements have left an indelible mark on the history of space exploration, and his name will forever be associated with the triumphs and challenges of space travel. As we look to the future and the possibilities of space exploration, we can draw inspiration from Gagarin's example and strive to push the boundaries of what is possible. Even though Yuri Gagarin's story has come to an end, his legacy will always stay the same. The impact he made and the inspiration he provided will continue to live on, influencing and motivating people for generations to come.